Joining us now in the studio at the JSC to discuss property flipping as an investment strategy, strategy is Ricardo Teixeira, who is a managing consultant at Axis. Morning to you, Ricardo. Your name Good suggests morning, that you would have had a lot of interest going into the World Cup, but that interest <laughs> is perhaps ebbing now. It's uh, slightly waning, you're quite right. Yeah. So I possibly may prefer to speak less about the Portuguese uh, yeah. soccer performance yeah. <laughs> and more about property. Yeah, well, at least Portugal got there, South Africa didn't. Uh, yeah, but let's talk about, that's the first time I've seen this term property flipping, so let's start with uh, what it means. Okay. It's actually, it's, um, it's not a very common term in South Africa, but as the name suggests, flipping means uh, really turning um, something into a profit. So when, we, when one looks at flipping property, it really implies um, profiting from a, profi a, a property ownership that you've held for a very short period of time, um, whereby you actually are able to buy low and sell at a, at a mm. higher value, mm. uh, but primarily aimed at like a trade where you are not holding that property for a long period of time. So it's like time. buying shares on the stock exchange. They talk about value investors who want to hold for the long term, and then others who say, hey, you know, if, if I can get a few cents on this share price, Correct. It's going, and I've got a lot of shares that I buy and sell. I can make money. No, I think that's a good analogy. Um, if you look at trade share traders, they really are uh, are able to have, a, or they do have a skill in terms of identifying value. Mm -hmm. And the same would apply for a property trader or for one one that's going to profit from flipping property, now, where uh, they can look at value. So yeah. where they can actually understand where the gaps in the valuation of property. Now, as a concept, this doesn't sound like it could be new. I mean, as long as property has been sold, presumably there would be people saying, hey, if I can buy it today and sell tomorrow mm -hmm. and get a reasonable amount, then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Is it in fashion now? Have things changed to make it attractive? Is there technology I think, involved? I think what's interesting, David, you're, you're, we've seen a, that the, the fashion or the, the trend pick up in the United States, particularly pre the housing crisis in 2008. And actually, that's what, was, what led to a lot of the, the housing crisis, where, where, where investors were able to profit from that uh, rapid spike in valuations of residential properties. Mm. And we've seen what, what's happened thereafter. Um, the trend seems to be picking up again now globally particularly in the USA, where there's an interest uh, and renewed interest in buying properties and the demand for housing. Um, and it seems to be picking up in, in other jurisdictions. And yeah, we, we come across in South Africa as well. Very often it's, it's been criticized as being seen as a get-rich-quick scheme. Let's give me an mm. example. Let's say a house in Johannesburg, mm. the typical suburb where this might happen, and how long it would take between the buying and the selling. Mm. Also, what about the bureaucracy, mm. which mm. <laughs> you, know, you have to register mm. things before you can sell them? Correct, yeah. And I think that's the, you, you mentioned bureaucracy and that's where I'm slightly skeptical about the concept of uh, flipping a property for, for a profit. Yeah. Um, purely in the, on, the, on the basis that, in theory, it sounds quite uh, possible to, to achieve. One just needs to be able to identify a property uh, that's below market value in a good area where there's a demand. Mm. The theory then implies take ownership, spend as little as possible refurbishing or fixing up, cleaning up the property, and then putting it back on the market at the market value. In that, in that area and profiting from that difference. But then when is a flip a flip and when is it uh, actually someone buying a house, refurbishing it, Absolutely. selling it down the line? What's the difference? Exactly, and I think that's where uh, the fine, there's a fine line between what is seen as a trade versus what is seen as an investment. Mm, yeah. um, so I wouldn't refer to f property flipping as an investment. It's purely spe speculative trading uh, or done by someone that actually has a view, particular view on the property market. So what sort of time scale are we talking about when this happens? The internationally, the time scale is a lot shorter, purely because the, the time to register property, say like in the U United States, is a lot quicker. Yeah. Bureaucracy, as you mentioned in South Africa, it's not necessarily bureaucracy, but it just we have a longer time mm. frame. Mm. So the time to be able to flip a profit, property for profit is a lot longer. And as a result, if you're not able to actually uh, do the deal with cash, you are entering into a whole realm of mm. other risks from in terms of interest rate risks, if you're financing the transaction, operating costs to actually mm. own the property in that time frame. And, and, and the like. So you at Axis, why are you taking an interest in this? Why are we talking about this this morning? I have a, a particular interest in property and uh, over the years have developed a, a, a view on property mm. um, and um, there's been a lot of interest in South Africa around a, a property scheme called flipping for property and there was comment that I made recently on, the, on that particular scheme um, and it's particularly to the questions you're asking this morning and the, the fact that it is possible to achieve profits on flipping for property, uh, for, on properties. However, one needs to be very aware of what are you actually being exposed to. Um, when we talk around a scheme, um, there's, there's a lot of regulation that protects consumers if one is sharing the investment with mm. others. So if you and I go into a joint investment, that would be called a scheme. Whereas if I'm owning property directly, I can control 
the purchase and the sale of property. Mm. Um, so the, the view that, that I've particularly expressed um, in my position as Axis is just for the public to be aware and to be cautious mm. of when parting with their capital in a scheme. So are there people going to other people and saying, hey, I'm going to get into this property, you give me some of your money, I'll put it in and in a month's time I'll sell it and then I'll give you some money back. And you've used the word scheme a couple of times now. Scheme has a bit of a, a cloud over it <laughs> as a word. Correct, things yeah. like Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes. Is this one of those? Or could it be one of those? I think, uh, th that's, I think that's the... Um, the, the word of caution that uh, investors need to be aware of is a scheme can be very legitimate. Uh, mm. A regulated uh, uh, collective investment scheme is regulated by the Financial Services Board and is perfectly legitimate mm. for an investor to, part to in participate in. Where a scheme is unregulated, and we do see that, particularly in property, we see unregulated property syndications where uh, private companies take ownership of property and they invite the public to mm. participate as shareholders in this, in this property company. That is referred to as a scheme, and yes, has negative connotations purely because of the risk profile. Mm. And I think that's the, 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 departure, the point of departure for the public, is to be aware of the, the risks that you take on mm. by, participating, by, by participating in an unregulated property scheme or investment scheme. You, you, you also have to uh, remember that old question of if it's that much money that you're going to make in so short a time, what's the catch? I mean, that's mm. the question Correct, that has to yeah. be asked, isn't and it? And you know, the, the, David, the, the general... Uh, uh, principle and philosophy of investing in property is that it is a get-rich-slowly mm. uh, investment. And when any scheme, whether it's property or, or others, promises quick gains, I think automatically one needs to be cautious about it. There is no such thing as get-rich-quick. No, there isn't. But people keep thinking that there is. Uh, Correct. Thanks uh, very much there to Ricardo Teixeira, who is uh, management consultant at uh, Axis.